Hey, what's up? Mike here and I want to return to some animation basics using InVision Studio. But first let's go back a few years. I'm a huge fan of animation in UI and it all started about 15 years ago. I was working at an agency in Warsaw as a flash animator slash designer. And yeah, that meant doing banner ads as well. But more often than not, I was also working on uh, flash landing pages and mini games, which was a lot of fun. And I think that all that experience with animating in flash made me understand the UIs a little bit differently, because when I'm looking at layers in a design, I see a potential for movement instead of just a flat plane. But it all starts with some solid basics. So let's launch InVision Studio and do some animating. Let's start with an artboard the size of a phone and fill it with a black rectangle. I'm adding a button and placing it 32 points from the sides and from the bottom. So let's fill it with a blue gradient and place it at an angle. This button will play the animation forward, so I'm adding the appropriate text. I add in a shadow by picking the darkest shade of our blue gradient and then placing the Y value at 8, the blur at 16, and the opacity at about 40%. Okay, so this doesn't have anything to do with the animation itself, but let's make the background a dark gradient as well. Now let's create a circle, add a nice gradient and a shadow, and then duplicate it three times. Duplicate the entire screen and then move the circles to the right side. I also change the label on the second button to say back. Set the transition to motion and the duration to about 3 seconds so you can see the animation well. Then add the same interaction to the second button to go back to screen number 1. Now when we test the animation we see clearly that all the three circles simply move from side to side. That's kinda boring. To have a little bit more control over your animation, select the first button and click on Edit Timeline. Each of our items has its own timeline, that's 3 seconds by default because that's the time of the animation that we have set. But you can move it around and you can make it longer or shorter at will. So I modify the timelines for our circle so they will move from point A to point B at different speeds but they all start at the same time. Now the animation looks a lot better, more realistic and more natural. But we can also move the starting points, so each circle takes the exact same time to move from point A to B, but they start one after the other. That allows us to make a structure to our animation, so it's not all linear and it can be a little bit more complex. There is one other way that you can use to affect how your animation looks like, and that is the easing curve. So I modify our timelines to all take the same amount of time, so all the animations will be uniform again. I'm gonna set each circle to a different easing method. The default curve is to ease both, which means the animation starts a little bit slower and then it speeds up to about halfway, and after halfway it starts slowing down again. That makes it look a little bit more natural, as if there is some friction in the animation. Ease in starts slow and then starts speeding up towards the very end of the animation, while ease out starts fast and then starts slowing down near the end. So you can use that to make your animations a lot more interesting and a lot more real. You can also try the pop, elastic and the bounce curves, but they are a little over the top, so it might even be better for you to create a custom curve for your animation. For most cases, the is both curve will work best, and I think the main takeaway from this is to make your animations look interesting by changing the values a little bit, changing the starting points, and changing the length of the animations. That way they will look more natural and more organic, more real. So remember, a linear progression from A to B is boring. Avoid that. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and see you next time!